Okay, so we were looking last time about the cast code part and uh, one of the thing which I said last time about cast code amplifiers uh, has the advantage I am just recapitulating what we did last time and we said it, ha it can you can increase the gain uh, without loss of gain bandwidth product points and that is the strength of cast code over cascaded system. And uh, essentially this is what makes cast code very interesting. However, you may find in many applications cast codes are not used in fact, okay. I am not uh, saying it will never be used. There are different variety of cast codes, op amps are available telescopic or folded or otherwise, each has some value, but they are not the ones which are commonly used okay, for every purpose. Specific purpose, yes, cast code is the best amplifier. Uh, in most cases, the amplifier which I will use is, uh, we shall see later, simple one stage, two stage amplifier, which is good enough for many applications, but in the integrated circuit you will be suddenly actually told to match with something else in a digital domain or its inputs is very different and then you need specific amplifiers to drive that. So, why we are teaching this? Because these are the real life systems in which any odd applications may require any odd kinds of amplifiers. Okay. However, we will first learn basics and when the application comes, okay, now we know this you want, so this is better for you. Okay, that is what the designer should know. If this is an application, this is the input it has to, then what amplification I should have so that it can drive better. So, this fact last time I said that cast code amplifiers are superior to cascades because in cascade the gain bandwidth of a single stage remains constant for any cascading stage and therefore, as you increase the gain by cascading the bandwidth keeps going down. If you have three stages, the bandwidth will further go down. Whereas, in cast code the gain bandwidth product does not change even if you boost the gain and that is something fantastic about cast codes. Penalty we shall see soon what is the big penalty we pay at least in integrated circuit that is a big penalty we are paying for all of it. Okay, so, this is what last time I was talking. So, I start again uh, basically I start now my amplifier. A typical cast code amplifier shown here is driven by uh, biasing current of IDS, uh, fixed current, current source as such you can say. And uh, we want to find the gain of this amplifier and we also want to find its gain bandwidth product. Okay. Now, the way I write that we have been already designing uh, amplifiers. What is the typical amplifier last time I showed? Very simple amplifier, just few seconds. A simple amplifier we have discussed already can have a current source load or whatever so biasing you wish. And this is your V in, this is your V out, okay. And we are interested in this amplifier is V0 by V in. And we know uh, typically this will come minus g m times sorry r 0. We have derived, derived this earlier. So, we just know this. So, what now I am going to do is I have a cast code which has more than one transistor sitting there in series there. And therefore, I say can I get g m effective and r o effective so that the gain remains g m r o. Okay. So, instead of just gm, the for the cast code I am saying gm effective into ro effective and if I derive these two values for this cast code case, I still have the gain which is minus gm effective into ro effective. Now, this is what follows and therefore, I thought before I start you should know that I am basically trying to replicate what I already know and convert that into my earlier knowledge. Is that okay, all of you? So the uh, of course the, uh, I, I, the after all this, when I'll show you the actual solving circuits is the best way of doing things using Kirchhoff law. So some other amplifier I show. Okay, you don't know anything fair enough. You can always put equivalent circuits. Okay, so I'll show you some examples of solving with any kind of 
3 series, 4 series or n series or n parallel, anything can be connected and then we can have equivalent circuit which may become quite complicated sometimes, but can always be solved using Kirchhoff laws. So, it is not necessary that this technique which I show you is the ultimate or something, but this why we choose chose this kind of this is actually trying to compare with the earlier amplifier. So, if I do you equivalently that then you say okay, in comparison what is going on. Okay, so, is that clear as I say I am this method which I am showing you is only to show you comparisons this need not be always used by anyone, but can also be used if you feel so okay, nothing very great about. So, okay, then we say if it is equivalent transistor situation is I is equal to G m effective times V n plus G o effective times V 0. As we did for normal amplifier instead of G m and G o, I will now say maybe if you I should do something like this. So, we can write that A C current through the for this equivalent amplifier stage will be I is equal to I is the current through the amplifier. So, G m effective times V n plus G o effective times V 0. We are already done for common source normal. So, this is the extension of that. So, what is the game I am trying to say? I will figure it out what is G m effective for the cascode and what is R o effective or G o effective for the cascode and continue to use this same method of solving further. Is that clear? What is the method I am suggesting? I am only trying to why I did I repeat? I want to see how much that G m effective is different from single stage amplifier G m and how much R o effective is different from R o of the single stage amplifier. Does that change? Because you said gain is boosting. Okay. So, that means that G m R o product must be increasing. So, it is possible that G m effective may be higher and also R o effective may be higher or one of them may be higher or other may not change or vice whatever it is. There are possibilities we like to see which one is really pushing the gain okay. and why then in spite of increasing gain the G, G B W or gain bandwidth point does not move. Okay. So, that is this. So, okay to say it, uh, let me put it this is a capacitance C which is load capacitance, this amplifier is driving a load capacitance. This load capacitance is such that all other capacitance uh, are can be neglected except the output capacitance which takes as a net load capacitance. Is that clear? Remember bandwidth can be a function of input capacitances, series capacitances and output capacitance. I say this is giving you what we call dominant pole as of for the case of solving. So, we start with the case 1, I say if V 0 is 0 in this expression I is equal to G m effective V n, then G m effective is I by V n when V 0 is 0, just substitute 0, so G m effective is I by V n okay, when V 0 is 0 look at this expression put V 0 0. So, I by V n is essentially G m effective when V 0 is 0. Now, similarly one can say if V n is 0 and then we figure out I by V 0 is nothing but G o effective is that okay? just either this 0 or this 0. So, I want to solve these two cases when V o, v o is 0 and V n is 0 and this equivalently then I get G o effective is I by V 0 and G m effective is I by V n. So, now I want to find I and V n ratio or I and V out ratio for the two conditions which I have written here. Is that okay? As simple as that nothing great to make V 0 0 I say it is a fixed V, so no change, so V 0 is 0 there. Let us say I flows through this both transistors should have, okay, please remember for an AC circuit any DC point is at 0. So, V reference which is a V DC for this is essentially grounded for the AC purposes. So, for this if I say this point is 0 
and then I solve I by V in ratio for this circuit and I will GM effective. If I say V in is 0 and I measure I by V O 2 here, then I will say I will get G O effective. So, this technique is simple and this is only try as I say keep trying to equal the GM and RO values of earlier this. So, that I see comparisons is that okay. So, the method is trivial to some extent, but it does give you some physics behind what is going to happen. Is that okay, everyone? Okay. To start with, of course, in reality, this may not be necessary. But in most integrated circuits, unless specified otherwise, transistors are always made equals. Okay. For variety of reasons, we shall come to see. Actually, if they are not identical, it creates hell of an issue. Okay. So we'll try to make uh, transistors identical in many cases. But if needed, we can modify the, what that change will be. Normally, thresholds are rarely changed, only it is the W by L ratio which may be different for two cases. Okay. Okay, so, now right now, I, I, for the simplicity, I assume M1, M2 are identical, that is, the thresholds are same, the W by L are same, and everything else is also same. mu is same, C ox is same, everything same. Okay, for the transistor M1, this is the lower one, the current flowing in this transistor, VGS is nothing but V. V g s for this m 1 is V in. So, beta V in minus V t square into 1 plus lambda V o 1 is the current flowing in m 1. Is it clear to you? Beta times V g s minus V t square into 1 plus lambda V d s. So, I just substitute. I am not actually using, I am just trying to show you what current is flowing there. However, if I only look this transistor from the a small signal point of view, then I say here I is equal to G m 1 times V in, G m 1 times V in is the current source going out, uh, current going in the output plus G o 1 of this into V o. Okay. Now, for this transistor m 2 slightly the current is similar now I is equal to beta 0 minus V o 1 minus V t square into 1 plus lambda minus V d, V d s is 0 minus V o 1, 0 minus V o 1. So, it is substitute, this can be a current in M 2. Please remember these two currents should be identical, because in a circuit only one current can flow, one circuit point. However, I write similar expression for I in for M 2. So, I is equal to G m 2 and what is V g s for this transistor? 0 minus V o 1, is that correct? What is the V g s for M 2? 0 minus V o 1. So, it is minus V o 1, I repeat. What is V g s for this M 2? Gate voltage is 0, source voltage is V o 1. So, 0 minus V o 1. So, G m 2 is into minus V o 1 plus G o 2. Now, how much is V o uh, uh, V d s? 0 minus V o 1, 0 minus V o 1. So, 0 minus V o 1, which can be written as minus G m 2 G o 2 into V o 1. Is that correct? Is that okay? So, I have an equation which gives me relationship between for M 2 and M 1. And uh, what is the ultimate aim I am looking for? What is first I am trying to derive what G m effective. So, what value I am really looking for? I by V n. Okay. So, this equation is what is important for me. Okay. So, I want to find G m effective. So, I want to find I by V n. All small signal. All small signal. It is always valid. It is we had just told you other day V small Okay, I think you should now go back and do some little more calculations yourself. The way small signal analysis is done in any I V characteristics, let us say this is the characteristics, any idea. What we fixed is this D C point, is that clear? And superimpose on this some signal, assuming that the slope here does not change small signal analysis currents are similar except that the DC value has been taken out of it. Essentially saying I total is I A C plus I D C V total is V A C 
plus V DC. So, any time you substitute the DC value together and subtract, so the difference is only AC. You subtract total minus this, so you will get the AC value. So, the expressions are valid. The current I is so adjusted that both M1 and M2 are in saturation. Is that clear? So, I has that, that is what I say bias point is fixed by I D C this, this value. So, if I fix that value, I am making device saturated. If it does not occur, yes, I will have a problem because there is no gain then possibly, I may not get enough gain or zero gain sometimes. But I assure you as of to solve this problem that I is so adjusted that the device, both devices can enter into saturation. Is that clear? The only word which I have not stated, which I see soon I will say, there is another word which I will use going to use is called headroom. Okay. What is that word headroom? That how much maximum I can shift that device till remains in saturation or go below till remains in saturation is called headroom. I have that play available. Okay. So, I, I assume that my device has sufficient headrooms, so that device remains in saturation. This is assumption which can be proved otherwise. It is something saying that first you assume and then prove that is all mathematicians do. So, why not we do it? Okay. Small ECC. So, As I say, you add total V D C plus V O everywhere D C and subtract D C value out of it, you will get similar equations. Is that clear to you? as long as you are in a small signal. This is all small signal circuits we are solving. Is that as long as you keep doing this, it is fair enough though no may not, as I you may say if the slope slightly goes away your headroom is so small, then you, you actually will never remain in saturation. So, where do you bias is a very crucial point for us. Okay. Okay, right now, we will come back to this issue in case it is needed, but let us move quickly. Uh, so, from the fir that first second equation which I just derived V O 1 can be derived as minus i divided by G M 2 plus G O. Just now I wrote an expression, I am now found to find V O 1 and substitute this V O 1 in that equation for M 1. Is that correct? What did I do? Evaluate V O 1 from M 2 and substitute in value for M 1. Okay. So, if I do this, I get I is equal to G M 1 V in which was the term anyway there and I have G O 1 V O 1 was the product there. So, it is V O 1 is now replaced by this minus I G M 2 by G O 2. Then I collect I terms. So, I is equal to 1 plus G O 1 upon G O 2 plus G M 2 is equal to G M 1 into V in and then I evaluate G M effect. As I say, better method survey is what put a equivalent circuit and solve, nothing better than that. But why I, I keep saying you why I am using this technique just to show, show you how much difference we will do if I go from single stage to cast code, because that gives you some numbers immediately to see. This may not be the method you should use for real circuit solvers, okay. even uh, SPICE does not use this. But why I chose this? This is not even given in many books because people do not believe that this is way I But I want to explain you how much cast code is really affecting you okay. and this is the way of explaining that. Okay. So, I is e into 1 plus G O 1 just collect this term on the other side and I is equal to 1 plus G O 1 by G O 2 G M 2 is equal to G M 1 V in and therefore, G M effective is I by V in that is what you said. For this condition, we have already said V O 2 is 0, we have already assumed and for that we have solved. So, G M effective is G M 1 upon 1 plus G O 1 plus G O 2 G M 2. If I connect the term properly, I will get G M effective is G M 1 times G M 2 plus G O 2 upon G O 1 plus G O 2 plus G M 2. Is that okay? Now, G M uh, typically is transconductance of an amplifier should be higher or lower for a good amplifier gain higher. So, typical and G 0 which is 1 upon R 0 that means, G 0 should be very small if you want larger gains. So, in general since the 
output resistance of a transistor is the order of mega ohms, typically G m is the order of milli milli modes or milli siemens. Okay. Since this is milli and that is mega or 1 upon micro you can say, so G m s are always much higher than G o s. Of course, given a value please check it device is still saturation and this is valid, if not use the full expression I am not saying. But let us say GMs are much higher than GOs, which normally will be in 2 to 3 orders, then you can leave GOs and figure it out. This term, if I leave GO2, so GM2 plus this compared to GM2 plus GO2, I leave GO1, this by this is 1. So, effective GM is nothing but equal to GM1. So, after even cross coding, I have not really modified my G m term. It is modified, I am not saying it is not. If you substitute this value, it will be slightly different from the just G m 1, because this term is slightly larger than this. G o is smaller, but let us say it is 10, this is 10 over minus 3, minus 6, minus 6. So, even if there is a difference slightly more value than the denominator, but ratio wise it is extremely small 0 0.99999 something kind of thing. So, we say practically G m is effective G m 1. So, one of the feature of a cast code was that it did not change G m. Then if gain has to boost we already said what is G m gain is G m effective times R o effective. So, obviously, if your G m is not changing the other term must be getting boosted otherwise there is no way I can boost the gain. Okay. So, then we must now evaluate R o effective and figure it out how much it is more than the normal R o I have okay. and if it is much higher that means my gains will be proportionately higher is that correct uh, as the ratio of R o effective to R o is essentially times that much times the normal gain will be boosted. Okay without losing G m value. Is that correct? Now, we will see why we are interested so strongly talking about G m, G m. So, is that in cast code, we have not gone out of our everything done. Okay. We just say G m effective is same as G m. Is that okay? everyone has written? Okay. Uh, case 2, I want to find R o effective. So, what is the technique we said? put V in equal to 0 is that okay? for A C O everywhere, this is anyway grounded and put a output voltage V 0 which enters a current I, this is a standard method of finding output resistance. Short all independent voltage current open the current sources and short all voltage sources independent ones, is that clear to you? And then apply a voltage at the output and measure the current there for the circuit V by I, there is the output resistance. So, same technique has been employed by us. Is that okay? So, okay. for M 1 transistor V n is 0. So, G M 1 into 0 plus G O 1 into V O 1 or to say V O 1 is I by G O 1. Is that okay? For the transistor M1, V in is 0, so V in is 0. So, V O1 is I by G O1. Okay. For the M2 transistor, the upper one, oh, I, maybe I should write, I think you are know, you are already have that, but for the M2 transistor, the current is G M2 times V G S. How much is V G S? 0 minus V O1. So, minus V O 1 and how much is V D S for this G O times V D S or this minus this. So, V 0 minus V O 1 is that ok. I collect the terms again minus G M 2 plus G O 2 into V O 1 plus G O 2 V 0 just collect V O 1 terms okay. and then substitute V O 1 from this into the second one. Last time what did I substitute? I picked up from M 2 and substituted in M 1. Now, I sub picked up from M 1 and substituted in M 2. Then I get 
i is equal to minus g m 2 g o 2 by g o 1 into i plus g o 2 v 0. Just substitute v o 1 from here, here and you get these expressions. What do I then collect? Collect i terms and then v o by i is r o effective. I collect i terms and then v o by i is the output resistance as seen from the output terminal okay, net. So, okay, so I co collect the terms of i and then figure out i by v 0 is g o effective, substitute everything and I get g o effective is g o 1 into g o 2 upon g o 1 in plus g o 2 plus g m 2 and I invert it to make it r o effective. So, r o effective is g o 1 plus g o 2 plus g m 2 upon g o 1 g o 2 divide this each term 1 upon g o 2 plus 1 upon g m 2 g o 1 plus g m 2 by g o 1 into r o 2. Okay. Still do some collection of terms and uh, you get r o 1 plus r o 2 plus g m 2 r o 2 r o 1. What is the r o effective? r o 1 plus r o 2 plus g m 2 r o 2 r o 1. That is something fantastic is happening. But what is g m 2 r o 2? The gain of second stage amplifier individually is that correct? So, a v 2 we can cancel. If you have noted down, I will just write down the expression. Okay. So, if I collect all this term and write g m 2 r o 2 as a v o 2, then I get r o effective is uh, precisely if you seek it. Uh, I think there is some mischief here, this will come r o 1 into r o plus that r o 2 term should not a v o 2 into r o 1. Yes, up to so r o 2 plus a v o 2 r o 2 r o 1 and r o 2 are equal. Why are they equal? We said transistors are equal, currents are equal 1 upon lambda i d is constant. So, r o s are equal. So, essentially what is it trying to tell and gains are typically of the what order? 100 to 1000 to 10,000 maybe 10 million gains of amplifiers can be as high as 1000, 10,000, a million as well. Okay, 10 to the power 6 gains are possible. Not that every time we will use them, but possible. Op amps of 10 to the power 6 uh, are anyway available. Is that correct? Gains are available. So, you normally A V O 2 will be very high compared to any other term there. Okay. And neglect all ROs, but A V into R O will be heavily increasing the R O value. A V is 1000 and R O is mega ohm. So, from mega ohm it has gone to giga ohms. Okay. So, now the output resistance of a cascode amplifier can be boosted by this A V O 2 term okay. and if R O effective is so high A V 0 which is nothing but G M effective into R O effective is as much high though G M effective is same as G M 1. Is that correct? G m effective is same as G m 1, but R o effective is gain times the R o is now pushed there. One of the stage gain A v 2 into R o is boosting the gain uh, R o and therefore, the gain equally get. Now, we were making a statement okay, that uh, if I would have done a cascade, what would have been the gain? instead of putting cast code, let us say A v 1 is the gain of first stage, A v 2 is the gain second stage and they are equal then it will be A v square, is that correct. So, here also if you see, if you just look at this expression A v 0, it can also be expressed in, do not write all of it, just write this function. A v 0 is A v v 1 plus A v o 2 plus additional this, since A v's are much larger square terms are larger than single terms. So, typically gain is gain square same as what cascade could have got it. Is that clear? Cascade could have got how much gain? Square of two of them. Here also I am getting same gain, little more, but almost same order of gain. Then what did I achieve? I have you said gain is boost. No, gain product it seems to be similar for the case of cascade as well as cascode. But what is changing or not changing is the gain bandwidth product. Is that point clear? The effective gain 
probably in a two stage cascade it is same as one single cast code. It has not of course, additional term is there. So, you may say yeah it is still boosting, but in 10 to power 6 plus 10 to power 3 it is still 10 to power 6. So, it is a gain is only a v square it is not really boosted as one thought, but then what is that I keep saying boosted from the single stage I have certainly I have only used one single stage there okay? and I have boosted the gain from 1000 to 10 power 6 okay? which is what I did for the cast code because RO effective I could boost 1000 times. Okay? Now, the term which is most important for us as I say you write down this expression they are simply derivable and there is nothing great about. The point I was trying to make is essentially cast code single stage is not very great compared to two stage cascade because we are comparing all the time with that why not connect two amplifiers in series which is always done many places. So, what is this cast code is actually doing? Okay. So, we say okay, there what was the problem I said? if I make a v 1 and a v 2 there or a v square the gain bandwidth will have new gain, but the bandwidth will go down because g b w is constant. Okay. So, as I keep putting cascade stage my bandwidth will keep on going reducing by that number, but that is does cascode does the same then why do we cascode? If it does not then we say I have beaten up Please remember G B W to some extent is called figure of merit or technology constraint. Okay. We always say G B W is constant, kuch nahi kar sakte. Now, with cast code, can we beat this so called technology constraint? And here is that expression. Yeah, everyone written down this. This is what it is saying gain bandwidth product of a cast code is G M effective by C L, but what is G M effective? G m 1 by C effective is that correct? C effective means C l plus any other capacitance you put there is fair, fair enough. The gain of a cast code is A v square, the bandwidth is G m effective by C l, G m effective is how much? G m 1. For a single stage, the gain bandwidth product is G m by C because G m 1 is this, which is same as the earlier one. So, what is it trying to say gain bandwidth product of a cast code is same as single stage amplifier, but from the single stage amplifier what has it changed gain how many times 1000 times or whatever the gain of that amplifier initials this that many times I have boosted the gain, but my gain bandwidth product has not changed is that correct. So, that is something I achieved that I have not missed the point of G B W, but I still boosted. Please, I last time showed you some figure, maybe I will repeat for you. You just write down this. In the case of cascade, what would have I lost in case I boosted the gain? By that much amount, I would have lost the bandwidth. Is that correct? Now, I say no gain bandwidth is not changing even with the cast code stage, but gain has been independently as if boosted by me. Is that clear? By increasing the this because G m by C l is no, no different from G m by C l for the two cases. So, the G b w point did not move okay. that help that G m effective is G m 1 has helped me now to fix that point independent of which amplifier I use that. So, here is the figure we will come back to it. Okay, maybe I should draw better figure just a minute I will come back to this expression once again in case you have not written. Let us say I have an amplifier which is gain in dBs versus frequency. So, this is my gain and let us say it has a single pole as I had taken the case this is my GBW, this is my A O 1 or something. If I would have boosted the gain okay, so what and this is my bandwidth. Okay. If I would have boosted the gain for by cascading let us say I go here okay, then this bandwidth 
point would have itself sorry so what is the change would have occurred b w original and b w new so i would have lost the bandwidth i increase further i would do this again this further bandwidth will go down now if i do the same thing for cos code what i am doing is the following a versus omega this is my normal single stage amplifier okay now i am boosting the gain okay i am going from here to here okay i may still lose some bandwidth i am not trying to say because that ratio is not exactly 1 so it some part i may but the slope is such that it still meets the same point so what has changed of course it should have been slightly this side okay so bandwidth reduction is still there it is not that it is not there but it is the way figure is not very good it's very close to the original bandwidth but what has shifted the gain i have boosted the gain to keep the same slope now my bandwidth slightly is going down but marginally going down and i say as if i am not even worried about that small change so i say okay i am retaining bandwidth what i had but i have boosted the gain is that correct that is the strength of cos code okay we'll solve an example give you the result okay. i agree but it's not related only to that that's what i say because this geo effective has many terms so is gm effective so overall since you have to meet gbw if you extrapolate it for higher gains essentially what i am saying you keep extrapolating that value then you will find gain has been boosted but bandwidth has not reduced in the same ratio is that clear that is exactly the strength of casco now catch word in this all game was which is why i said you all the figures and everything was this which you should realize what i did actually i just fool myself okay and i said okay look at this last line you can read down that's most important the gain bandwidth of cos code is same as gain bandwidth of a single stage amplifier however av0 is av square clearly the technology constraint is now new is under root gain cos code into the old gbw is now constant is that correct because the new gain square ho gaya na bhi cos code mein gain square aaya single stage mein gain hi tha so equivalently it is gain under root gains this of cos code multiplied by old gbw is the new constant which you have got this is called the new parameter figure of merit for a amplifier normally this would have been your figure of merit i have now cross that limit okay that's exactly what i was trying to achieve think of it how did i solve so gain square into bandwidth is now constant not gain bandwidth that is something is great we have achieved out of this is that clear to you because further increase will shift now you i mean it's not that infinitum it can go okay is that clear to you so it is limp, no bandwidth is reducing it's not that but it's gain square time bandwidth is constant not gain into bandwidth now all this game which i did not show you or did not say specifically if you see your cos code amplifier once again very seriously i am just trying to fool myself i kept on telling this is a single stage cos code okay yeah it is called single stage cos code but in reality it is also cascading two things you have one amplifier which is common source okay output of a common source which is vo1 is fed to this amplifier which is common gate okay so i am actually cascading two amplifiers even now only thing is instead of two common source amplifiers the second stage now is 
common gate and the advantage of when I now show you common gate this will be very obvious like in the case of common base amplifiers the current gain is unity same is in this case the common gate amplifiers do not give you any current because source current drain current same. So, it is almost unity current gains, but what is the advantage it allows you to shift the let us say what is the first stage is doing Raj you look at it m 1 is a common source amplifier. So, what does common source amplifiers characteristics converts voltage into current common gate amplifier improves the output impedance just now you have said. So, what and still available say the gives the same current. So, what has improved the current source equivalent voltage dependent current source has become far superior compared to single stage is that clear. So, I have not really achieved fantastic or something I was trying to boost every time but the idea was to show I have improved the current source from a normal stage amplifier which has now higher output resistance which is a good current source how higher output resistance means good current source all that I have done is by this technique is to improve good current source which a normal amplifier we see normal voltage to current converters have relatively RO is not very bad even there 10 to power 6 or kind, but this has actually how many how much I want for a good current source infinite. So, by boosting this I am trying to get better current source out of the amplifier is that equivalently. So, actually all statement Bhuma Phira ki hai ki baat koi badi nahi thi. The funda point is that if I connect the two which way can get me what really I am looking for. So, analog design ka ye issue hai. Three amplifiers we will discuss quickly from the Zadavis book common source, common gate source followers and we will see which ones have what property and when connected what it will do for you is that correct. So, as a designer I, I will do analysis because at the end I have to know values. So, I will have to do analysis substitute the values, but I like to know a priori that which ones I should use for purpose spec of I am looking for and this is what I am trying to hint every now and then that this course is not just solving a problem, but just to tell you that by doing this I can achieve something which a priori I was not aware. I could solve a cascode I will show you RO increase, but why I did all this because I figured out this actually can do this job. So, if tomorrow there is some biomedical instrumentation requirement comes you want a constant current to be driven because the time taken for charging the input capacitor there has to be constant high ECG monitor. At that time you may require a cascode amplifier because you need a constant current source as good as possible other it has a time constraint it will not switch quickly ok. This is an issue which in real life applications one can see which ones to use. So, as a designer I will not be told ki isko analyze karke dikhao, but for doing analysis I will figure it out what is that characteristics I get out of it which when needed I can then apply. So, the difference is that clear analysis is always required to prove a point, but you must remember the point is more important than the analysis ok. At the end we are doing all this to show ok if this need appears I will pick up this ok. Design now what people designers are expert about as I keep saying they are very good in copying all of you are, but maybe all of us also. Uh, so, they try to use someone else's result, but many a times the kind of value uh, some spec is not same between the two and that may actually kill you the other way because that is what the analysis really if you do twinkle on this this may also go like gm effect to here remain gm you do something else may that also changes and the whole purpose would have actually lost to you is that clear. So, in future the difference between analog circuit course and analog design course is only this that we still solve the same circuits which we have done n times but we now learn from them what what is the advantage of using this. So, these issues you should keep in mind all the time because these are the only things which are required for a good designers ok. Given an application decide oh this spec, so can I do this plus this, this plus this. So, that must strike you and there is no solution for each case available in the market is that correct. So, each application will require 
different thinking and therefore, different design and therefore, people say it is slightly difficult because you have to do it in your mind. I said digital walo ke samne aisa nahi bolna chahiye, but uh, to some extent yes, sorry, ha. It is always gain bandwidth product, gm by c is a gain bandwidth product, I will, I will solve this, right now take from me, I have not solved frequency response so far, so I have not come to it, I will prove it what you are asking, it is always gain bandwidth product and not bandwidth. Ha, for a cascade yes, but cascode that is what I proved you that the GMC does not change, but gain still boosted. Bandwidth product remain constant. Correct. Gain boosted. Gain increase, which is in cascade did not happen because any single stage I follow another stage, the gain if gain increase bandwidth automatically goes down, GBW may still remain your point, is, but the bandwidth reduction is too strong if I keep increasing the gain stages. 1000 times karo ga 1000 times bandwidth niche chala jayega. Cascode does that since it actually allows you to slope to be modified compared to cascade, I am able to reduce bandwidth, I am still reducing bandwidth, but marginal compared to the cascade stage. We will solve a problem, plot a Bode's plot and show you where, where they match. Okay. Okay. Now, before we go uh, this cascode stage, Sorry, sorry, I am very sorry. Is this? Sorry. Just note down, I will come back to solve the values of this and then I will show you. All that I am trying to say, I have changed the constraint now, okay. Using cast code, I have changed the constraint. Because gain square, yeah, hai na? yeah gain square hai na? So, under root kya to gain, gain into gain bandwidth is gain square bandwidth. Gain cast code is A V square under root of that is A v. So, gain into gain bandwidth is gain square into bandwidth is now constant. Okay. This is the new constraint. Is that okay? Cast code is not a single stage amplifier that is what I proved just now. This is only true for cast code stages. This has been derived for cast code. Otherwise, gain bandwidth is a constant single stage we have done put second stage gain increases bandwidth goes down nothing you can do on that is sacrosanct. Ek do ga to dusra hum le lenge. No, no, no. It's does it under root of that. That's the why, what I am saying. It will actually reduce by under root of that. I'll show. I'll give as value. I'll actually plot the real values for that. Then you will see actually slope changing is how much. Okay. Okay. I'll check it. But this is correct. Okay. Someone says, is this gain increases enough? Can I do something more than that? Yeah, I think cascode people came out with another circuit. They say here is another uh, cascode amplifier, which is gain boosted cascode amplifier. Now, already you have boosted the gain. Now, I have an amplifier which further boosts the gain. What it should not change again being cascode stage, the GM should not change, but what should therefore it increases RO effect. So, you want even better current source now, you have another case in which I can have gain boosted cascode amplifier. Okay, the method here is simple. In the first cascode case, you just first draw the circuit and then expression. You start looking at my first and then you write. I have a same as M1, M2, here I actually put a ground there. The gate of 2 was reference to a DC value or grounded for AC. Instead, I have an amplifier sitting there, which is receiving an input VO1 and transferring minus A times VO1 to the gate of M2. Is that clear, Ras? All that I did? that I have boosted earlier it was 0 minus V O 1, now A V O 1 minus V O 1. Okay. So, it is slightly A plus 1 times V O 1 is what now I am giving to the gate of M 2. This is called boosted gains. 
or boosted ROs. Okay. Same way, I can repeat the same expression for M1 and M2 okay. and figure out by same logic instead of VDS, what should I use for the first one VDS? Same as VO1, no change. For this, the VGS is how much now? Minus VO1 minus AGB times VO1. Is that okay? How much is this VGS? This minus this. What is the output of first amplifier here at the gate? A. So, A minus A times VO1 or AGB I call gain boost. So, AGB times VO1 minus VO1 that is AGB plus 1 times VO1 is the VGS. Substitute there. This term does not change. Why it does not change? Because that this remains same, there is nothing change at the VDS. Is that okay? Only VGS has changed for M2, VO, VDS has not changed for M2. So, I am only changing the V. Please, this voltage is the gate voltage which is minus A VO1. Is that correct? This is still VO1. So, VGS is minus A VO1 minus VO1. So, minus A plus 1 VO1. If I substitute this, I get GM effective long enough expression I derived and if I say R O 1 by R O 2 is close to same. So, these are ones, these are larger, these terms are larger, this can be neglected if everything cancels. So, G M effective is still the G M 1. So, however, if I look at G O effective now for the same expression instead of 0 minus V O 1 where you are using it should use 1 plus A G times V O 1 terms. So, now you are going to get G O effect is R O 1 plus R O 2 A V 2 into 1 plus A G B times R O 1. Pehle ye A G B nahi tha, is not it? So, it was A V 2 times R O 1. So, gain was uh, resistance are only boosted by the gain stage of this normal say. Now, that itself is getting multiplied by the boost stage gain of this stage. Is it okay to you? Not clear? I am only substituting where it was 1, 1 plus A G B okay, and rewriting the same. So, now how much is R O effective? It's precisely saying A V 1 times A G B times R O 1, this into this into this, these are small terms. Okay. So, what is the earlier one equivalent we said? A V 2 times R O 1. Now, I multiplied by A G B. Now, this A G amplifier could be what kind of amplifier it could be? It could be even another cascode. Okay. That cascode may be driven by another cascode and maybe the minimum value 0 finally can be there at the input. So, 1 stage, 2 stage, n stages of cascode can bring a desired gain what boost you are getting. Is that point clear? The amplifier I am using can itself be a cascode amplifier which may be driven by another cascode and another cascode and go on and go on till 3 stage, 4 stage okay, so that the net gain is what you are really looking for. Okay. In that case, you will be able to get whatever AGB you are looking for that can be attained without losing what bandwidth anywhere. Okay. So, you just boost it there no poles will hit you there. So, keep doing and then you will get heavily boosted gain uh, in this case. Is that correct? Okay, so, what is the advantage of uh, gain boosting? Possibility. That is why I say I have not discussed about the stability issue. Yeah, we will come. If there are, this is equivalent circuit assuming very clean stage. But in real life, uh, uh, not only the instability, the zero will be issue, okay. not the pole as much. Okay. The worry may actually come from a zero. Okay. Uh, the zero may not be on even on the imaginary axis, it may actually fall, lie on the left top plane, okay. which means it will oscillate. Okay. What is that it makes? This is a good current source I put there. Okay. But this current source cannot be created out of nothing. So, it could have a p channel device, 
it could have been an channel device, it could have been a series of two devices even there, whose output resistance will also be there. Is that clear to you? The issue is now what? I assume this is an ideal current source. Okay. So, uska aro to infinite leke ja raho mein. But in real life, this may not be infinite. Where that resistance will hit you then? At the output node, whatever is RO here, this RO will shunt it. And if that RO is smaller, all that this cascode work people were doing is useless because if that resistance is smaller, output is only seeing that resistance. Is that clear? So, that is why I say as an amplifier, you may worry, you should not use that because the actual RO may not be very high for normal amplifier. Okay, it will be say R D there, okay, then what do you do? Okay. So, R D is the output resistance nothing R O effective, R O effective is 1 billion ohms parallel to 1 k. Okay. Okay, so, issue was that okay, you have this, you may have more than one transistor in series. Now, my worry starts something like this, let us say for some reasons, This is one example, this may be my many other, this may be p channel, it may be grounded for the heck of it or maybe I put V b here which is biased something. Now, this V in here, this is my output, this is equivalent to some R O 2 okay, or R O 3 you may call. Now, the one is of course, as I say what is the major worry? you have boosted R O here and if this R O 3 is smaller, so the output is R O 3. So, what should I do here? Then I should also cascode the upper ones say V G 2, V G G 3 and V G G 4. If I do this, yeah I have the R O of this stage may be as much as R O of the lower stage and maybe half it may still be, but at least it is in giga or higher values you can create out of this. But this is the issue, if you are boosting your R O and if you are 3 or 4 transistor in series that Madam Surbhi was asking me how do you guarantee this, what is the guarantee of a saturation? A transistor is in saturation if it is Vgs minus Vt is equal to Vds or smaller than Vds, only then device is in saturation. If that is so, Vd1, let us call this Vd sat 1, Vd sat 2, Vd sat 3 and Vd sat 4 for this case, for RO boosting you did 4, RO has got what you wanted, goods current source, everything you say achieved. Now, you have an issue that there are 4 V D S in series, is that correct? The minimum you have V G S minus V T, V D sat is V G S minus V T 1 value. Okay. Typically, how much is the excess voltage I said 100, 200 millivolts, okay. but now you have 800 millivolts. Your supply is 1.2 volt or 1 volt at times keep it saturated your headroom is practically nil there. Okay. So, now you are worried that whether this amplifier will remain amplifier for a long any change in values of VNs or VGS, then I have a problem this amplifier may not remain in saturation, all transistor may not remain in saturation. If they do not remain in saturation all the theory which I derived as she said how do you know, yeah I also do not know, but possibly it is there that will be lost. So, now I am worried that is this a good solution? Okay. If I have to boost so much, I must ensure that I am not using this essentially as an amplifier, is that correct? But this is called telescopic. Okay. So, I can I will have a shown an amplifier op amp which is telescopic op amp which has its own advantages at some cost. So, we like to see that all the time putting things in series may not be 
that advantage yes as it looks. If you have a 3 volt supply fantastic no problems, 1, 1 1.2 there is an issue and why I keep saying now that is there is issue because now power supply for digital part is 1 volt okay. and I am forced to work with them independently made the bipolar why I do all this. Okay. I am doing all this because I am forced to work on CMOS and also on the technology node which is digital node. Okay. So, I figured it out it was not so trivial as I thought I just thought everything is good everything is good is not really that good as I thought. Okay. So, do not use cast code as a very though as a concept it is fantastic no one can beat its concept. But remember where to use that is a very crucial factor. Okay. We will use in a cascode uh, op-amps show you. So, to avoid this to some extent I will quickly last few slides I will show you which is the word I used. I okay, will do this cascode amplifier with resistive load ladder. There are two ways of doing this cascoding one is called normal cascode, the other is called folded cascode. The right is folded, left is normal. What is the difference I did? Here both transistors were n channels, the common gate amplifier transistor was also n channel and the driver was also n channel, is that okay? However, in the folded cascode the driver or the input of an amplifier is n channel device but there is another device which is p type and it is look at it it is instead of going up it is folded down by me. Okay. Now, you say what is so big about we will see what is it big about by some things. Okay. Is that point clear? This is called folded cast code it has advantage of layouts and it has advantage of supply voltage requirements okay, both. ये सब चीजें रजावी के बुक में हैं, ओके, वॉयस मेकर के बुक में भी हैं, ओके, सो देर इज नथिंग वेरी न्यू आई एम टीचिंग, आई एम ट्राइंग टू ब्रिंग दोस इश्यूज, विच एट टाइम्स दे डोंट वांट टू हैमर ऑन, सो आई एम हैमरिंग दैट इज दोस इश्यूज, नथिंग ग्रेट इज रियली बीइंग टूल्ड, ओके, आई विल Please keep your figure right with you because I cannot put both together. So, I will use figure from my lower down sheet and I will show you what. For the first normal cast code, what is how do we define VOV? VG1 minus a source is grounded, so VG1 minus VT is VOV. So, VG1 is VOV plus what is VOV? VGS minus VT. Is that clear? So, I am just trying to be little funny on that. What is V D 1 which is our V O 1 shown there? What is V D 1? Is the over voltage which is V D saturation plus additional voltage which will allow transistor still remain in. So, that is the limit which I want to go to. So, we say V D 1 is the over voltage which is V D sat plus some headroom voltage. Is that clear? what is why this V H has been added with this additional this also device should remain in saturation. V G 2 look for the term for the V G 2 which is V D 1 plus V O V for the second transistor which is V G S minus V T for that okay, plus V T because this is essentially V D S of the two to second transistor V D S of the second transistor. So, it is V O V plus V T N then the V G 2 can be written as substituting here V D 1 from here into this I get 2 V O V plus V H plus V T N. Then I evaluate V D 2 which I get 2 V O V plus V H plus V 2 V 0. This small V 0 is a average value of a signal which may actually because of the capacitors there average value okay, which can be treated 0 in many cases, but just say swing I R because V O is swinging on the output. So, what is the maximum value should be taken care in case it takes you out then 
So, we want to keep it otherwise in many cases V o can be treated as a 0 value, but for the sake of evaluation the peak value I should know I will add that also in my calculation is that correct this small V o is the peak value of the output which may not be very small at times in a small larger signal. So, I assume V o is present which in normal case is very small and neglected, but for the sake of clarity I say okay, add that also. So, I get supply voltage should be 2 V O V yes V D 2 is the voltage at this node is that correct. This essential is this plus this plus this or directly this. Please remember in a transistor whichever way go in a circuit ek thodi theory aapko hamesha ke liye bata dete jo hum sab jagah bahut easily istemal karte hain. If that is not happening then there is an issue. This voltage whatever is V 1 if this voltage is V 2 and this voltage is V 3 V 1 must be sin wise V 2 plus this is the game either you through go through gate and from gate to the drain or source or you come from directly this. If I want to evaluate this and I do not know some things, so I can go through gate and come to the drain side is that point clear this is one way of doing it this is what I have used. This method is very strong used in bipolars is that clear this is your V B E this is your V B C and this is your VCB. So, we keep saying when the transistor is externally reverse bias, but may become forward bias because this may become forward okay. that is exactly saturation stage in bipolar this is exactly how they do. So, this technique please be clear at a given two nodes whichever path you come some total of voltage must be same because between two nodes this is the difference okay. that cannot be changed. So, method is this or this must be same loops cannot be go through this or go through this voltage difference is same irrespective. Okay. So, tricks of the trade is try games whichever you know you use that value to achieve the other one. Okay. So, aap karke dekho, thoda hurriedly kiya hai. I, I may be a miss, small mistake here there, but the point I am saying if I do similarly for folded cascode please note down that V D 2 there V D 2 sorry haan banaya nahi tha I am sorry she is right. Please remember this is V D 2 P, P channel device please remember this is P channel device drain is downwards this is V S 2 this is V D 1 ok is that correct. The source voltage of P channel is same as drain voltage of N channels ok. I 1 or I 2 are the current sources which are biasing N and P device they may be same in most cases they will be same. But yes, V O is essentially small one. This is V D 1. So, V S 2 is same as V D 1. V D 2 essentially is reference to either this or this minus this plus this that is what I am saying. Normal either find V D 2 is equal to this plus V D S of this, but V D S can be derived from V G S side also is that clear to you. I repeat V G S minus V T is V D S saturation. So, I can go this way or I can go through gate and still arrive at the same equivalent values ok try it yourself. Up the point I am saying is this V D 2 is what is V 1 Raj? drop across current source V 1 is the drop across current source. So, V D 2 small a c signal average value plus V 1 is V D 2 is that ok I repeat this voltage plus whatever is a c on that which may be not be small peak of that. So, this value is drop across this plus small average extra value of V o is essentially the V D 2. What is V G 2 gate voltage? I know this value, I know V O V. So, I can reach 
V g 2 is that correct. So, V g 2 is nothing but V g 2 minus V g p. Okay. Please remember V s 2 is same as V d 1 which is V 1 plus V o V plus V 0. Then the V supply voltage is V d 1 plus V 1. What is supply voltage? This value plus the drop across source or this value plus V s 2 is same as V d 2. So, I calculate V supply for folded cast code is 2 V 1 plus V o V plus V 0. I repeat V 0 is a very small term, but in a larger signal the peak value may not be that small. And therefore, we kept it for the security. Why did we keep? Because it should not go that it is taking transistor in linear mode. So, we put that value. So, if I compare these two values, what do you see really? The V supply voltage of a folded cascode is slightly smaller than V supply voltage of full cascode, of normal cascode. So, what does that, did we achieve something better? What was the problem I first told you? Ki if I put everything in series, I have that problem of huge supply voltage requirement. So, partly I can save myself from that great trouble by putting folding. Okay. Now, in this case folded cascode has used n channel as driver, p channel as the other side folding, you can do otherwise. Okay. These are essentially therefore, called CMOS folded cascodes, is that correct? The complementary word in digital they say gates are common, in analog we never say they are common. P and n channel if they are, then we say they are CMOS, please do not think at no time Barring exception, I should not say at no time. Most cases we only use independent P channel and N channel and never use they as a common so a common gate materials uh, terminals. So, in that sense, it is not equivalent of a digital CMOS, it is always both P and N channel have been used and therefore it is CMOS amplifier. Is that clear? Otherwise, please do not compare it with the other side. So, the problem of power supply probably can be taken care by folding techniques okay. and that is what we will use in the folded cascode op amp, we will actually fold it okay, to save some supply requirements. See you then.